Uh, hi, my name is Matteo. Thank you for joining us for this uh, Navigating the Tech Career Maze workshop. We're going to be talking about how to gain skills, make recruiters, and get hired in tech. Uh, a couple of housekeeping. Uh, so this is going to be the agenda. We're going to be first speaking with a tech recruiter. Then we're going to get uh, to see how you can get the skills for a tech job. And finally, uh, how to best be prepared to get hired, talking with uh, an expert in the industry. Uh, if you have any questions at any point, feel free to write them down in the chat. You can also address them to who wants to answer your question by tagging them with an at. And towards uh, the last 10 minutes, we're going to open the floor and ask the public question, answer the public questions. So I think we're all set to go. Uh, let's start it off with the, with the star of the day. Uh, hi, Pujan Nair, Director of Australian Talent. Uh, who best to uh, present you than yourself? So maybe I'll <laughs> ask you to... <laughs> To give a, a quick introduction about who you are, what you do. Great. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Pooja. I'm the director at Australian Talent. We are a consulting and a talent acquisition firm based here in Australia. We've been in the market for about 12 years now. We help different startups, SMEs build their team, tech team, marketing team. We kind of help in all sectors possible. Uh, I'm an engineer myself. So anything that's related to tech, uh, I kind of head things around. And yeah, this is this is me. Cool. Get, you'll get to know me more during the course. Yes. <laughs> Lots of questions coming your way, I'm sure. Cool. So I think, first of all, the, the one question that everyone has in their mind right now when they see you know tech market, tech talent, is how do you as a recruiter see the current tech talent market looking? And maybe I'm thinking both for juniors and you know more experienced people. This is something I, I mean, I keep getting this question uh, often from a lot of clients, candidates, uh, and I keep telling them a good developer can never be out of job. So uh, tech market is always booming. Like I know you recently would have heard a lot of layoffs and things like that, but a majority of the reason was also because last year there was a high shortage of skills because of which a lot of developers were hired. Uh, way beyond their experience uh, in terms of salary and things like that. So the company couldn't afford them anymore. And henceforth, a lot of the pe people were kind of laid off are in that kind of sector where they couldn't really sustain a developer who couldn't really perform well. So they are the ones that are out in the market. Trust me, a good developer I haven't seen out in the market being laid off or kind of really looking out for a job. So tech market is always booming. Uh, it can never, at least for another 20, 30 years, it's going nowhere. Cool. So you, you feel it picking up with your clients asking to recruit more and more tech talent? Any day, any day, absolutely. Good tech talent, good tech. That's the difference. <laughs> cool. Um, I think the, the next question we had in mind was, you know, uh, let's position myself as a company. I'm looking to hire a tech talent. What makes it a good tech talent? What am I looking for in a person? Uh, completely depends on the size of the company. I would say if it's a startup, then you have a different mindset. If it's an enterprise, it's a different mindset altogether. Uh, everyone wants a problem solver. Everyone. Nobody likes problems. Everyone wants a solution. Uh, so one key thing that everyone looks for is a problem solver. After that, if you're a startup, then you have got different skills mostly the soft skills. Uh, obviously you need to know basic things uh, which comes in the hard skills, but soft skills really plays a key role in uh, hiring in a startup because mm -hmm. the flexibility, the kind of mindset that you need to have to be in a startup is way different compared to being in an enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, while being in an enterprise, you're just literally given a coding test and you clear it, you get the job. <laughs> it's as simple as okay. that. Sounds good. So that's how you, you show that you have problem solving skills. It's just yeah. be good at the technical test. And how can you prepare for a technical test? Maybe reach out to other people that did it or online? There's so many online platforms that you have these days that can prepare you for these technical tests. Obviously, it cannot be the same, but there are so many, so many platforms that you could enroll yourself in and take those online practical exams. I am sure people in the call are going to be hitting you up after this being like, where, where can I train for a <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and so I guess you have seen quite a fair share of people recruiting for tech now. Could you maybe give us your top three of stuff you saw, good things you saw people doing, so the do's and very bad stuff that got them eliminated that we would say like, don't do that. 
uh, do's definitely make sure your resume is up to date. Um, so when I say up to date, yeah, make sure you have got a, a beautiful LinkedIn profile where you're constantly updating about your certifications and things that, that you're doing. Uh, make sure you put that LinkedIn link on your resume uh, because Australia, we are too high on LinkedIn profiles and LinkedIn accounts. So we always go up and look up you on LinkedIn when you're applying for a job. That's an inside yeah. story. Uh, so make sure you've got all that in place. Um, something um, that I really like when someone applies for a job, and these days we get like 30, 40 applications in a day. But then of that, there are like one or two candidates who reach out to me on LinkedIn and drop me a message saying, look, I've applied for a job. Uh, do you have any feedback for me? Or I would like to have a chat with you and things like that. That makes me feel like, okay, I need to talk to this person because he's taking that extra effort to talk to me mm -hmm. about this position. So that's definitely key is to mm -hmm. reach out to the people that are in that company who are uh, recruiting for that job. Okay. So that's a big do. Uh, so make sure you have an updated resume, make sure you're reaching out to people who are hiring. Don't, uh, something that really works on the other, uh, goes completely wrong is you putting up something that you haven't done. For example, you have not worked on a specific framework or a specific language, but that's a requirement for the job. And just to kind of be screened, you put it on your resume. And then when you're evaluated, you don't know anything that puts you in a really wrong position. And uh, Sydney is such a small market, the word spreads. So never do that. Never, ever do that. So only put the things that you've done and make sure you highlight as much as you can the things you've done but mm -hmm. never for anything that you haven't done sounds uh, sounds good but better, better look out for the those things not to do uh moving on to the next question we had in mind was you know you kind of quickly touched upon it like what do you see as a very big difference between working for a startup versus working for a big company uh bottom line is the mindset really the mindset uh, mm -hmm startup because you've got to wear like multiple hats in a day it's not possible by an a person who's worked in an enterprise for so many years because there's set process and system in place that you are supposed to follow and in startup there is no process there is no system every day is such a, a different day you know you don't know what's coming your way so uh, it's literally the mindset that is kind of needed uh, and so, so if I'm applying for a job in tech and I'm applying to both startup and big companies, there's something wrong with what I'm doing, right? I should focus on. You really need to make sure where you want to go because startup is where you're going and finding a solution by yourself, all by yourself. You're left alone. Uh, the founder is looking for you to go find an answer to it. In an enterprise, you've got hierarchy. So you have your reporting manager. You have got 100 managers that you can go and ask an answer to that. Mm -hmm. So and maybe, you decide where you want to go because mm -hmm. if you're someone who really likes going out and exploring your way, startup is the space. So, mm -hmm. And what would you say maybe is the difference in the recruitment process for the two? Mm. Maybe length or question type? Startups usually tend to have smaller, probably one or two rounds of interview. So they'll definitely, if it's a tech position, they uh, make sure we have a technical round in place and then meeting the founder and that is it. Uh, but in enterprise company, you've got like four or five rounds of interviews. You have meetings, you're hiring manager, reporting manager. You've got so many interview rounds when it comes to enterprise companies. So if you want to work for a big company, you better be prepared to go to go the length. Have patience. If you're applying for an enterprise company, make sure you have patience. Okay, that's uh, words of wisdom. <laughs> um, and you also briefly touched upon this. Um, what would you say is the importance you know, of soft skills versus hard skills? Like, I mean, it's a very generic question, but how can one work on its soft skills, for example? Uh, both of them, they go hand in hand. Uh, I've had so many founders who come to me and say, Pooja, I can train people on hard skills. You get me the right soft skills. Okay. <laughs> you know? So, yes. so it's, it's really different. So people are really, in terms of tech wise, if you know even basics and you really have the right attitude, people are happy to take you on board and mm -hmm. take you from there if you have the right attitude. So make sure you've got your basics right. Get our basics, mm -hmm. basics right. You get that strong, then everything else falls in place. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's really about the attitude and then the skills. I mean, you can always learn 
which yes. I think is uh, it's kind of a good segue into, yes, exactly. Uh, so Pooja, thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I've seen that a few questions popped up in the chat, so stick around and then we'll open the Q&A at the end. Sure. But so to talk, uh, I'll be taking again the, the mic here and to talk again about hard skills. Um, we are collaborating together with the, with Startup and Angel Australians as Le Wagon. So what this French name uh, means here in Australia is not much, but we are a global leader in immersive tech training. So we teach people the skills they need to become a junior software engineer, data analyst, data scientist. And these trainings are dedicated to people that either want to change careers. So they're doing something completely unrelated to tech. They have a non-technical background and they want to break into tech or they want to upskill. They already know a bit, but they want to, you know, as I say, upskill. And when I say we're not very known here, that's not the case in the world. So we have over 40 physical campuses across 25 cities. We've trained today 20, 22,000 graduates. And I think the stat I, I really like to point out here often is uh, people kind of like our trainings. You can see that in the 6,600 reviews that leave us at 4.98 out of 5. And also a very strong profile we have at Luagon is founders. So we have over 200 startups that were started by our alumni that went on to build a company, raise almost a billion US dollars. And all of this thanks to, as I said, our courses that allow them to acquire skills. And we do these trainings both on-site or online and both full-time or part-time. Uh, I'll go quickly over it. So this is where we're present today. Uh, my name is Matteo. I'm the one that's gonna be running the Sydney campus. We've been in Melbourne since 2018. Uh, these are some of the small companies that our alumni went to, you know, some startups like Atlassian, Canva, REA, and so on. Uh, all, you know, as I said, startups that were founded by our alumni that went on to become entrepreneurs. Um, the way we manage to teach people the skills they need to get jobs in tech and to do that efficiently, because our boot camps do that in nine weeks, uh, is thanks to this methodology. So we have full-time, very intense courses. It's a 9 a.m. to 6 a.m. commitment for nine weeks. But at the end of the nine weeks in France, where we are from, the government officially recognizes your training as equivalent to a bachelor's degree. So that's how much you'll be learning in nine weeks. And you can learn both, as I said, on campus with one teacher for every seven students or online. And you can become either a web developer, a data scientist, or a data analyst. You know, all the hot job techs at the moment that can never seem to get filled up fast enough. Um, so yeah, as I said, our web development bootcamp is for people that want to create tech products, boost their careers, and work in either as software engineers or in tech-related jobs or manage tech teams. And then the data analytics bootcamp is more for the, as the saying goes, data is the new oil. So you are able to future-proof your career. You need to understand all these moving bricks, and this allows you to find a job as a data analyst, business analyst, or work as, in a data-related job, you know, as a sales growth product manager, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'll go quickly over this, but just to make you understand how a, a typical day looks like and how you manage to learn three years worth of content in nine weeks, you typically have uh, an hour and a half of lecture in the morning from an experienced teacher that has years of experience. Uh, then you have a lot and a lot, I mean, a lot of hands-on learning, but that's really how you uh, gain very fast the skills. So you have six hours and a half of challenges and you do this with a buddy. So it means you have you and another person of your cohort working together. So that's how the real life works. When you have a job afterwards, you code with people. It's called peer programming. Then we have an hour of chill time where you bring in a yoga teacher or you go for a, a stroll in the park or, or some games or something to also events to meet founders and get inspired. And then at the end of the day, a little life code to train and then go home and have a sleep because the day after it all starts again. Uh, we also have the part-time format. So this is for people that are in their jobs but want to keep in their jobs and then also upskill and find another job in tech afterwards, two nights a week and then Saturdays. Uh, all the info is gonna be online, I'm just passing it over. And then of course, I think this is the most important part and reason why you're all here is the career week. So at the end of it, we don't just drop you out into nature, go find a job, good luck. We have a dedicated career service within Le Wagon. Uh, we have a coach that allows you to have one-on-one -on -one sessions, build your personal profile, learn the processes, talk to recruiters just like we're doing today, and also Q&A with the thousands of alumni. You know, you can always ask anyone anytime, how did you find a job? What did you do? Can you recommend me something? Or like all that stuff. And as I said, we also have career coaching opportunities at Le Wagon. Anyway, I think that that will wrap my intervention here. Uh, I believe uh, that's all you need to know. So we're starting our courses in Sydney in October. And I, let me just check if he's here, but I think the start of the day has arrived. Ryan, are you in the call? I'm here, but I don't know if I'm the star. 
<laughs> I think people have a lot of questions for someone with uh, with your experience. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I think just like Pooja, I'll hand you the mic and I'll let you introduce a bit about yourself, your background and what you do now. Yeah, sure. So um, I was actually a salesman 10 years ago um, and then I shifted into analytics. Um, I started in a very entry-level role and, and built my way up um, and did the wagon uh, boot camp software development as well in the middle there. Uh, I have experience in FMCG, transportation, biotechnology. Uh, I've held senior management roles and uh, now I own my own company. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, the full, the full spectrum. <laughs> you are the man to ask questions about tech in general. We got capital T. So thanks a lot for that. And I think I would like to start, you know, from the very basics for the people in the chat, in the call, so that would not have any ideas. Can you, very, in very simple terms, differentiate between data analytics, data science, and software engineering? Yeah, it's uh, it's quite tricky to, to break those down in a simple way because they're all starting to blend in with each other these days. But um, if I was to think about it in terms of deliverables, I think that a data analyst is presenting insights to a business. Um, they're doing data analysis and, and, and showing them the patterns and things that they see. I think uh, if depending on the size of the company, a data scientist is more focused on building uh, an AI model, machine learning model um, to, to do some predictions. And then of course you need the software engineer to deploy that uh, model. So the deliverable is actually an app uh, as a software engineer. So, yeah. Very clear. Thanks. Thanks a lot for that. And then again, building up on your experience in these different companies, what would you say is, I don't know, your, your go-to, what, what helped you land the job you wanted every time? Was it skills? Was it networking? Was it soft skills, hard skills, or just blind luck? I don't know. Uh, I think at the start, it was a lot of hard work and had to I had to continually upskill myself and and make sure that I use those skills on the job to to really you know demonstrate the good quality work and then after a while I started to build a bit of a reputation so hard work upskill always upskilling and then delivering good work and then your reputation sort of gets you the jobs mm -hmm. that's that's very nice and then uh, I mean once you you've seen quite a few companies, was there were there any surprises that you were you know not prepared for both in the good terms or in the bad terms once you joined a tech company? You know, I was actually surprised at how supportive everybody is in the the tech community. Um, you know, coming from sales, it's a, a bit more cutthroat. You're trying to, you know, win sales and things like that. So but but in tech, everybody's like willing to to sit down and help you um, you know. Uh, solve a problem and, and they want you to get better so uh, that was a big surprise to me so once we managed to break in the it's very it's very good vibe and uh, cohesive and helpful yeah yeah okay good so i think people are going to have a lot of questions about the breaking in part after this uh and yeah you sh you mentioned you have now your own company so you're freelancing uh what would you i mean how's your experience both as an employee and as a freelance any advice for someone that would want to I mean, make the choice now between going one or the other way. Yeah, so I think the the work itself, the the scope is quite similar. Um, but when you're an employee, you've kind of got more people around you, and um, you know you're sort of part of the company. Whereas when you are the company, you you actually feel more obligated to deliver higher quality work. Mm -hmm. um, the, the I guess the other surprise was that all the, the legal and the accounting stuff that I have to do now, I now appreciate how much is done by a company. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot more hours when you run your own company because you've got to think about data privacy laws and uh, bookkeeping and things like that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's different. And in terms of, I would say, work-life balance, how's, uh, how's, you know, tech has a certain reputation of having a good work-life balance. Was that what you found? And did you kind of lose it by going freelance? Uh, I think you can. I think you can pick and choose. So, you know, I've taken on four clients, which is probably too much. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, once I build up enough money in the business, then I'll be able to pick and choose a bit more. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm still in the early stages of my business. Um, but yeah, I think I think once you get good at automating, and once you get good at what you do, you don't really work as much. You just work smarter. I think. Mm -hmm. 
that's uh, that's very good to know and automation i will get back to that i have a certain word in my mind that scares a lot of people in tech and i guess you know where this is going but first of all uh i mean i had to slip it in here but how did the coding bootcamp help you in your career yeah i, I love the experience and hence why i'm here to to talk with no fees um doing it for free um so i think it gave me not only better fundamentals with coding but also how to break problems down and solve it um you know coding is one of those skills where you just you get to the point where you're like i'm never going to be able to fix this you know mm -hmm. but then the, the boot camp almost gives you this a skill set in itself to just persevere and actually work it out um, whether mm -hmm. it's asking somebody googling uh, now there's chat gpt i don't know it wasn't chat gpt when i did it but that would have been really handy back then um, but yeah, just that just that mindset of pushing through and solving problems and breaking them down was probably the the, the best mm -hmm. you could do for my career. Yeah. Well, I'm happy you you brought ChatGPT up. That was that was going to be kind of the follow up question. But how do you feel that's going to impact you know the tech job market and more for the junior people? Is it really going to replace us all, or as I always like to say, do you believe like myself <laughs> that once you know and understand what's going on in coding, ChatGPT is going to help you improve instead of taking your job? Oh, a hundred percent. It's going to make you improve. I don't see the threat at, at all. You, you still need to know what you're doing mm -hmm. um, because it can give you bugs and it will probably always give some bugs if you're not prompting it correctly. I think it's an exciting time now because if you were to do a boot camp and then use chat GP, GP, chat GPT, you'd be able to move a lot faster than somebody who, mm -hmm. um, you know, did a computer science degree 10, 15 years ago and then had to like, you know, yeah. read a book basically <laughs> to, to work it out i think you could just yeah. move so much faster now it's just it's it's also it's an awesome time to get into tech that's that's very good to know and since you mentioned you know someone 10 15 years ago what would you give as advice to you know yourself 10 years ago about career or i don't know about how to break how to job market and all that uh i think i would have I took a lot of chances but i reckon i could have taken more chances when i saw the opportunity arise mm -hmm. Um, because whenever I, you know, in the last 10 years, I've made a mistake or look silly, it's actually accelerating my learning a lot faster than if I was to do nothing at all. And so just taking that chance and sort of putting myself out there, like doing the boot camp, it's, it, it just accelerates everything. Um, mm -hmm. so you just, you just got to put yourself out there and, and you'll be surprised at how much more comes back to you breaking out of the comfort zone i would say absolutely absolutely, absolutely. um so i'm i'm looking i have an eye on the chat here and i see a couple of questions from emmanuel if i'm pronouncing that right um so i think this one is for puja is what do you look for in a junior data analyst uh yeah what what is it that you look for in a dat junior data analyst what are the key skills or you know soft skills hard skills that you want to have in that person uh, junior uh, who really understands the basics really <laughs> because okay. it's going to be a junior position so you understand i don't know a bit of uh, small coding stuff on python and things like that that that's like really basic that is needed for a junior data analyst position and obviously the good mindset of learning and being passionate about where you're going to be joining and having like a good vibe in the team and company and looking to grow with the company is something that uh, the company would be focusing on <laughs> So yeah, expressing motivation and basically that the company is not going to be investing a lot in you and then at the first chance you get, you run away. But trust me, even with a junior data analyst position, that you would have a technical round. So make sure you've got the basics right. right. Again. Of course. <laughs> um, Emmanuel also asked if they have the opportunity to connect with you on LinkedIn. I think you would be more than happy to. Uh, <laughs> please, please go ahead. Um, so no more questions on the chat if anyone on the call wants to you know open the mic and jump in you have four minutes to do it now uh, otherwise i'll just leave on the screen uh, so this was a very quick introduction and a very quick chat with the uh, puja and puja thank you very much again and ryan as well uh, we're going to be having actually uh, uh, our head our, our global head of admissions uh, pal that's going to be coming in he has been working in the field for over five years so he has seen a lot of people changing life, you know, having no prior technical background, doing the bootcamp and then finding work. He is a very good guy to talk to because he has seen a lot. So if you ever want to come, we're having a, an in-person info session, the way we call it. So you can just show up on the 6th 
Uh, we're going to be bringing beers and then you can ask Paul any questions you have and try to get, you know, guidance, counseling. Uh, and yeah, so Emmanuel also asked, where can we register for the technical test? I guess there, there's a lot of resources if you have any on hand. You, just, you can just type on Google uh, online data science technical test for interviews. You'll get like hundreds of results in there. The, the, we, we don't say it enough, but being a good software engineer or data scientist is 95% Googling. Exactly. <laughs> It's all about that. Absolutely. And, um, uh, going going back to Ryan, if you're still there. Still here. Still here. What's uh, I'm more curious about, you know, I asked a lot about the past, but what's uh, what's in the future? What's someone as experienced as you looking to do uh, in the future? You're going to be freelancing and uh, moving around Australia with your van, something like that? Uh, no, actually, maybe the, I'll be hiring people on the line at some point. I, I, I see myself expanding. Um, it's because tech is booming right now and, um, you know, analytics is getting more and more in demand. I, I, I can't have, an, I don't have enough time to service all my clients. So at some point I'm going to need to expand. So, yeah. Uh -huh. And um, another question I have in the chat here is uh, someone would like to know a bit more how to start a freelance. So you mentioned a bit of uh, legal and accounting issues. How did you go about starting freelancing? Uh, so when I started the company, it was um, it had some discounted legal services and accounting services, and um, so I took you know they had sort of like free consults at the start, and I just talked about what I needed in my business, and then they sort of directed me as to, to what I needed. Um, and then as I started to get more clients, I realized I had to do their master service agreements. Um, so I needed to basically look at, you know, data privacy and, and things like that. So I needed to work with the, with the lawyer there. So it cost mm -hmm. a few thousand dollars to start up, but you can, you can make a lot of money in this, in this space. It's a lot of hard work, but you, you, the ROI can be huge. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, there's several considerations to come with freelancing. It, it's not only roses and everything's great. There's like some setting up to do and headaches. Uh, I have a question here. Maybe Pooja, you have seen this case. Um, some of us in the call are Australian migrants. For example, a person here came from France five months ago to develop their engineering career. Do you have any advice on setting up migrant condition? You know, visa, sponsorship, skill assessment, you know, in order to maximize hiring chances. What would you suggest to those people? Well, oh, that's a really a tricky question because it, again, depends company to company because the times mostly I've seen a situation where this person has come down on a working holiday visa and has got like one year of full working rights. So imagine this person gets a job in the second or the third month, then maybe the company is evaluating this person for the next six months. And if he or she is good, then they would be uh, looking to sponsor this candidate. So then this person doesn't have to really think a lot about, I don't know, skill assessment and things like that, because usually if you're sponsored, then the next step is you move to a PR automatically. Um, so it really depends company to company. Um, usually, it ideally, it is good that if you have like two, three years of full working rights, your chances of getting a job goes higher. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you've got like six months of uh, work rights left, it completely depends on the kind of networking you're doing, the connections you're building. That's how probably you could even get a job. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, wait, I'll, I just realized, I'll, I'll pop in the chat real quick, uh, the names of everyone in the... So we have Pooja Nair on LinkedIn. We have myself, and then we have Brian, I hope not to kill your name, Ashton. Is that how you pronounce it? Oh, it. wait. Yeah. So yeah, if you have, I think our time is almost up, but if you have any you know, questions, follow-ups about this, feel free to drop us a message. Uh, I'm always on LinkedIn a bit too much even. Uh, I think Pooja, same for goes for you. <laughs> our job is on LinkedIn. Exactly, it's my bread and butter. <laughs> and yeah, and maybe Ryan is going to be a bit busy running his uh, freelance empire, but just chuck me any questions about you know, experienced people in tech and I can for sure uh, address it to the right people um yeah so i think we're there's no more questions that i see in the chat i think maybe yeah, there's a last one here uh, it's a bit i know 
if you want to answer it, Ryan, but someone asked if you contract and run under agencies or do you do directly with clients and how do you find clients? If you want to reveal your spill the beans. Uh, that's okay. I'm, I'm direct to clients. I don't do through contracts at the moment. Um, and it's through, through my network at this point. Okay. So it's really the importance about network and talking to people. Yeah. Also, I think that would be one of my advice to wrap it up is if you're ever applying for jobs in tech, don't just, as I, as Pooja mentioned, don't just apply online and forget about it. Each job gets hundreds of candidates. Try to always send a, a nice message on LinkedIn to someone being like, Hey, I look at recruiting for this. I'd be interested to know more about X, Y, Z, or like let's have a coffee chat, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I think that's gonna that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, any last words of wisdom from our guests, or we've covered a lot? I could just say is we have got some tech positions open on our uh, websites. If you guys want to apply and have a look, uh, yeah, all the positions are open in there. Just put in your application, and um, yeah, we could have a chat and see. If there's anything else that could suit your profile and we could uh, have a discussion. The website being Australian. Uh, yes. Probably I can put it in the chat so that way people will see. Yeah. yeah. So, and also, I mean, one last word from me, maybe if you want to uh, feel what our courses are or what you know tech skills you might like, we run a lot of free events. So we have free workshops about intro to data analytics, intro to web development, all that stuff. It's on a meetup, so you just type uh, Google, uh, so you just Google Le Wagon Meetup, and then you'll find it there. We have quite a few things coming up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again, Pooja. Thank you again, Ryan. Lovely to have you. There is the job board. Feel free to click on the link. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon again, and don't hesitate to send any messages. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Matthew. Nice meeting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Yeah.